Welcome back to the expedition. This week, we're going to be heading back to Future World East to take a look at the history of Mission Space. Uh, wait, what was that? Anyway, Mission Space is a centrifugal motion simulator thrill ride in Epcot. The aim is to simulate what an astronaut might experience on board a spacecraft during... Have you ever beyond today? Okay, hold on. Let's pause the tour for a second while I check this out. Finally, got your attention. Are you not forgetting about something here? Not that I can think of. Why? We've just arrived at the next stop on our expedition at Mission Space. I think you might need to go a little bit further back in history here than Mission Space. Don't tell me you forgot about Horizons. Oh, uh, well, you covered the history of Horizons on your channel, Park Ride History, so well that we decided to just pick up the tour where you left off. Oh, well, uh, I, I guess that makes enough sense. Well, it looks like you guys had better carry on with your expedition. And, uh, please try to remember, Orange Side is the best. Yeah, I guess I agree with you on that one. Let's take a look. Mission Space aim is to simulate the experience of a mission to Mars, from the high G-force to the idea of hypersleep. After Horizons had finally officially closed for good in January 1999, yeah, there's no reopening again after that, over a year later, Disney began construction on the new attraction. Talk began to circulate that Disney was building a space-themed attraction, and in April of 2000, Disney announced that the new attraction was so big it would not be able to fit into the old Horizons building. Yeah, well you see the thing about that is that it wasn't exactly true. Instead they decided to knock down the building. The idea of a space pavilion was not new, and way back in 1977 Disney had the first ideas for one in Epcot. Although nothing like Mission Space, the plan was that a huge interstellar space vehicle would transport passengers to the outer frontiers of the universe. Obviously not literally, but these plans didn't come to be. After consulting with NASA, Disney settled on the idea of creating a ride which would test guests in the same way NASA tested potential astronauts. Disney wanted to make sure you felt the forces on your mission to Mars. Initially, the ride was sponsored by Compaq, which began working with Disney Imagineers on the design in April 2000. HP eventually assumed the sponsorship upon its merger with Compaq in 2002. And as with most Epcot pavilions, Mission Space also does feature a HP lounge for employees of the company. After the demolition of Horizons was completed and the construction finished, the attraction soft opened in June 2003 and celebrated its grand opening on October 9th, 2003, with a ceremony attended by Disney CEO at the time Michael Eisner, HP CEO Carly Fiorina, and NASA Administrator Sean O'Keefe, as well as several astronauts. The estimated cost for the construction and the demolition of Horizons was around 100 million US dollars. The pre-show began preparing guests for the space mission by Capcom, Gary Sinise. Report for your pre-flight briefing. It's go time. The ride begins with the liftoff from planet Earth, which consists of 2.4 G force for your launch. To achieve this feeling, Disney used a centrifuge system. The ride would have four separate centrifuges, each with 10 capsules holding four riders, bringing the hourly capacity of the attraction to 1,600, a lot less than the estimated 2,700 that Horizons provided. The force felt on launch is over twice the force of gravity on Earth's surface, essentially making you feel 2.5 times as heavy as you normally would. The effect on guest bodies were, let's just say, sometimes extreme, and a few months after launch, sickness bags were actually added onto the ride. While the arms span at an intense rate to create the force needed, the capsules themselves were able to rotate and pivot to allow the simulation of movement with the onboard screens. When you reach space, the sensation changes, and now you're actually in zero gravity, giving the feeling of weightlessness. These overwhelming changes within a short space of time, coupled with the spinning of the rise, caused some issues with guests. NASA had warned Disney to some downsides of the ride, and the ride opened with a large number of warning signs in the queue line. Disney even built a rest area for guests who cast members deemed were feeling the effects of the ride after coming off. 
I guess space travel isn't for everyone. I actually witnessed this the first time I rode the ride in 2004, taking my dad on it who loves all things space related and him coming off state into this day that he will never ride it again. And a good while after riding it was spent laying on a bench outside where he was actually unable to move. The early reception to Mission Space was mixed, but mostly positive. People who liked it loved it, and the technological aspects of the ride were a huge hit, and the people who did not like it really did not like it. From day one though, Mission Space received a lot of code Vs. The first year alone had reportedly 194 instances where paramedics had to treat ill space travellers, mostly dizzy or nausea related. Warning signs covered the whole entrance area and cast members began warning guests with the option to step out from the ride before riding. Social media was not a huge thing at the time, but the word of mouth of the ride made the ride into a huge success in Disney's eyes. Unfortunately, we now have to mention some sad history for the ride. In 2005, a four-year-old boy stopped breathing during the ride. It was later shown that the boy had suffered from an unknown heart condition and unfortunately died. It is also important to know that the family sued Disney, which was settled out of court. In the aftermath of this event, critics largely criticised the health problems that Mission Space had been known to cause, as well as the height restrictions on the ride. Disney publicists defended the ride as statistically among the safest in Orlando. It was less than a year after this that they had to do the same thing again. Ten months later, another person had died after riding Mission Space, this time an adult. Results again showed that the rider had an unknown heart condition. Disney's response was that 8 million people had ridden the attraction and only 8 serious incidents were recorded. Tragically though, two of those had died. No matter where people stood on the subject, the entire situation was not great publicity for the Disney attraction. The story was picked up around the world. Disney had to do something to keep the Disney reputation intact. What they decided was that the single ride line for the attraction would change. The issue most guests had with the ride came for one reason, the forces from the spinning in the centrifuge. In order to negate these troubles, they would simply remove that part of the attraction and offer two different versions. Where previously all four centrifuges span, Disney would stop two of them and offer a different experience. In May 2006, only five weeks after the second death, Disney revealed the split version of Mission Space. Half of the ride no longer span, while still offering the same tilt and movements from the original version. It was branded as Less Intense Training or the Green Team version, while the original would be labelled More Intense Training and the Orange Team. In the decade following this change, unconfirmed reports indicate that incidents requiring paramedics have declined, and there have been no further deaths on the attraction since. The actual simulator hardware used in Mission Space was created by Environmental Tectonics Corporation, with a nearly 30 million contract in February 2000. The company actually sued Disney in 2003, seeking over $15 million for alleged failure to pay the full amount of the contract, and for sharing the design details with competitors. Disney countersued and the companies settled in January 2009. The attraction was completely closed in June 2017 for refurbishment. During the 2017 D23 Expo, it was confirmed that the Green Mission would be given a new video simulating a flight around the Earth. We're adding a brand new mission to join the already popular Orange Mission. Our partners at ILM have worked their magic on making the Mars Mission look even more incredible. But wait till you see what we've created with them for the all new Green Mission. And the Orange Mission will remain the same with updated graphics. The new Green Mission was much more fitting to the spin free version and received positive reaction on launch, pun intended. The new Capcom, however, Gina Torres, not so much. The X2 Space Shuttle. It's powered by solid hydrogen and can accelerate from zero to 6,000 in 60 seconds. So when you hear the words go for launch, You'll definitely want to hang on. Let's try that again. So when you hear the words, go for launch, you'll definitely want to hang on. The ride looks to be sticking around for a while longer. Fans of Horizons generally see the ride as a poor replacement. Horizons, though, does still manage to live on in a few small ways around Mission Space. For example, the Horizons logo can still be seen throughout the attraction. And, as a matter of fact, the original Horizons planter still stands as well, in its original shape and all. 
Others love the ride experience and it really is in my opinion a unique experience the first time you try the orange version. The build up to head into space, the warning signs, all leading up to feeling the 2.5 G's of force. As you can probably tell, I'm a fan of the attraction and think the update does a lot to improve it, giving you essentially two different experiences for what was planned to be one ride. The reputation though of the ride never truly went away and people are still anxious to ride it, even not trusting the less intense green version to be suitable for them. My dad still won't go near the thing. Thank you so much to Jack from Park Ride History for coming on this expedition. And if you would like a History of Horizons, be sure to check out his channel, which I have linked below. I've also put a couple of links in the description for a few other videos regarding Horizons. Thank you all for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, please do like and subscribe. And we will see you next time on Expedition Epcot.